Hi everyone, welcome back to another tutorial. In this video, we're gonna first review Keyshot's render settings and how to set up your images for final output, then dive into the rendering improvements in Keyshot 10. All right, so once you have your scene completed and you're ready to render out those final shots, you need to locate and launch the render settings window. This can be found right here in the toolbar and with this open, you'll notice three different tabs on the left-hand side, output, options, and Q. I'm going to give a brief overview of these, so if you want a more in-depth look at this render dialog, check out our Keyshot Essentials video focused on render settings. Okay, let's look at the output settings first. You can see across the top you have options for still image, animation if you have one set up in your scene, Keyshot XR, and configurator. In general, the output settings are where you're going to be naming your file, choosing a folder to save your file to, and selecting the file format where all of these options here, aside from JPEG, will allow you to save renders with the option to include an alpha channel for transparency. Below that, there's a checkbox to include metadata in your final output, as well as the image size settings in both resolution and print size. You can manually enter your desired values here or select from the resolution presets. If you would like to include additional layers and passes, you do have a wide variety of options to choose from. And if you want to render out a specific region of your scene, you can check this box and arrange that in the real-time view or by entering specific values here. Moving on to the options tab, you'll find settings for the render mode and quality. You have three options for the render mode, default, background, and send to network. With default selected, Keyshot will prioritize CPU or GPU usage to complete your rendering in a secondary window, the render output window, where you can watch a preview of your render. Under this default option, you cannot use any other program operations. Background functions similarly to default, meaning that the render output window will launch, but it will remain independent from Keyshot. That way you can unpause Keyshot and continue working while your rendering finishes. The last render mode, Sent Network, is only available with a purchased add-on, but if you have that add-on, then under this mode, you're able to send off renders to a network of two or more computers. This significantly speeds up render times. And finally, let's take a look at the quality settings where you'll find three available options. We have maximum samples, maximum time, and custom control. Maximum samples allow you to set the number of passes Keyshot will take to complete your rendering. A higher sample count means higher quality, but longer render times. But typically this will give you better quality results. Under maximum time, you can set the rendering time per frame or for the entire duration. This is a nice option if you need to get something done quickly just for demonstrative purposes or to meet a tight deadline. And then with custom control, you're presented with a lot of quality settings, such as sample count, ray bounces, shadow quality, and then this pixel filter size slider, which actually brings us to our very first Keyshot 10 improvement. The pixel blur slider, which you may have been familiar with in Keyshot 9, has been renamed in Keyshot 10 to pixel filter size. It has always existed here in custom control, but actually in Keyshot 10 has now been added to both the maximum time and maximum samples options. So increasing the pixel filter size will help prevent aliasing and reduce sharpness by creating a gentle amount of blur in the image. Bringing the slider down to one won't apply any blur, but the default value of 1.5 is consistent with the real-time view and the final output that you're familiar with in Keyshot 9. So you can expect the same quality if you just leave this setting untouched. But let's look at some comparison images here with different values. In Keyshot 9, you can tell these lines here have some aliasing issues. They appear slightly jagged without that pixel filter, but in Keyshot 10, with the pixel filter applied, those lines are a lot cleaner. The value you choose for your scene will largely depend on the image resolution, but if you're faced with a slightly slanted, high contrast edge, you will definitely benefit from this improvement. Let's check out Denoise now. If you're familiar with Denoise in Keyshot 9, you know that it's a one-click solution for removing noise in your scene and is incredibly useful for speeding up rendering times. Well, in Keyshot 10, it has some updates. With the new addition of albedo and normal information to the denoiser, you'll find increased predictability and more identical results between the real-time view and the rendered image. I've preloaded the same scene in both Keyshot 9 and Keyshot 10 and allowed it to res up over the same number of samples to best illustrate the results. 
So this is a screenshot from the real-time view in 9 compared to the real-time view in 10, both at 128 samples with denoise set to 0.5. Notice that we're getting more accurate texture details in 10 in the real-time view. Now comparing the two final images across 9 and 10, and you can really see the quality improvement. Both of these rendered out at 500 samples with denoise at 0.8. We can see that in general the noise is handled a lot better in 10, along with better representation of the details and textures. Now something to note in 10 that does come into play with these denoise updates is this smooth global illumination checkbox. It's located in the lighting tab when the interior rendering mode is selected. This setting is responsible for smoothing out the indirect light on surfaces so the end result is less noisy. It allows for fast previewing of scenes with complex lighting but is only applicable for CPU rendering. This image here has smooth global illumination turned on, this one is without, and this last one is also without smooth global illumination but it does have denoise at a value of 0.8. Most of the time, the improvements and power with the regular image denoiser are enough to give you high quality results. So typically, you can leave the smooth global illumination option unchecked. Overall, with these denoise updates, you can better rely on the preview in your real-time view as an indication of final results. So if you love this one-click denoise option, then you're probably familiar with the denoise slider in the image tab. In Keyshot 9, this was really your only option for smoothing out noise in your scene. But, in Keyshot 10, you'll now also find this Firefly Removal option. This right here is a big rendering improvement. If you notice any unwanted artifacts like this in your scene, just simply adjust the Firefly Removal slider and that should quickly take care of those artifacts. Now, a little goes a long way with the Firefly Removal tool. A small value will take care of most noticeable fireflies, while a large value will definitely hit all those hotspots. But at this point, you do run the risk of losing some detail in your image. Too much of this filter generally dulls highlights and makes images look a little flat, so use this sparingly on its own or strategically in conjunction with the denoise. But let's look at some comparison images here with different values. The image on the right has the firefly removal setting applied, which has done a great job at eliminating those artifacts. Touching on some more awesome rendering improvements, let's look at caustics. You could find the Caustics checkbox under the Lighting tab in the Project window. So what's Caustics? That's the way light rays are reflected off a surface or through an object. When you toggle it on, you can see how Caustics affect the realism of other objects, including the shadows, depth of color, and interaction of light between objects of different materials. In Keyshot 10, Caustics are even better. Improvements have allowed Caustics to converge faster on both CPU and GPU, perhaps more noticeably on GPU, the speed of convergence is also less dependent on scene size, making caustics for larger scenes faster to calculate. This translates to faster renders and more realistic scenes in Keyshot 10. This is really evident in these side-by-side -side shots here. The window on this toy car is much clearer with these updates in 10, and then these shadows here that are cast from this glass of ice water look much more realistic. This is definitely something to be excited about in Keyshot 10. So back to the same vanity scene, you can spot another improvement, most noticeably on this bottle here. That is an improved appearance of rough dielectrics. New multiple scattering microfacets for dielectrics provides a brighter appearance of very rough dielectrics. In these comparison images between 9 and 10, this material is overall just more accurate, significantly so in Keyshot 10. So I hope you enjoyed that overview of Keyshot's render settings and then the improvements in Keyshot 10. Thanks for watching this Keyshot tutorial. If you're interested in more useful Keyshot content, hit that subscribe button and get notified as soon as new videos hit this channel. Also, we'd love to hear your thoughts on this tutorial in the comment section below. And if you found this video useful, give it a like and share it with your friends.